morning. It's good to be gathered in worship this morning on this beautiful fall morning. Uh, extra special. Hey, you can come on in. Sit up here for now. So it's an awesome Sunday. We have our kids singing. We have our choir singing. We have our confirmation student confirmands giving their faith statements today. Welcome, kids. Come on in. Come on down here. Come all the way down here. There we go. A lot of fun this morning. Uh, our confirmands will be giving their faith statements, so we look forward to hearing how God's been working in their lives. And then some of them, reminder, you'll be making stoles after worship, so don't forget that. A uh, couple other announcements. We'll have our uh, YAP meeting immediately following worship today at 10 a.m. And we'll also have a funeral pre-planning meeting, if you're interested in that, at 10.15. Uh, it looks like none of you are listening to me anyway. Guys, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> Up here. Important announcements. I guess I'm not as cute as these ones, but... So those, those couple things happening after worship, and then finally we'll just give one big thank you to uh, Genio, who donated the turkey for our, our sub making. We made 2,400 subs on Wednesday, so we're grateful for that ministry, and extra, extra, extra special thanks to the adults who came and volunteered. This ministry can't go on without you, so uh, we're, we're grateful for that. And one more shout out is in order, uh, extra special shout out to Jesus this morning who makes the blind see. Uh, our beloved pastor Kendall has had some eye surgeries last week and the coming week, so let's give Jesus Thanks a shout out. Thanks for pointing that out. I for, for that. <laughs> He's still got his glasses, but uh, he'll be seeing in no time here. So. Thank you. Let's stand and welcome one another that are gathered uh, with us for worship this morning, and then we'll turn to our brief order of confession and forgiveness. One final thing, we give thanks for our radio and online services are, are given in honor of Marion Storleen's 90th birthday this morning from Mike and Kim Thompson. So thank you for that support as well. So on page uh, two in now the Feast and Celebration uh, booklet, we'll uh, offer our brief order of confession and forgiveness. So we begin as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we pray. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart we have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. Now with joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated and we'll hear our preschoolers and kindergartners sing. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, kids. Uh, it was great only having a couple of weeks of Sunday school, and you can sing like that. That's great. Uh, very good. Thanks for sharing your music with us. We'll invite the congregation to stand once again as you're able, and we'll turn to page three, and we'll sing uh, together our Kyrie as we begin our worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray together the prayer of the day as it is printed for us in our bulletins this morning. So let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that the Spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And you may be seated. June Petula is our lecture this morning. The first reading is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord, will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and, and assembly. 
Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of the works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his proper precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belong eternal praise. The word of the Lord. And the lesson is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God on, as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of faith. So this uh, Sunday and next Sunday, our 10th graders will be sharing their faith statements uh, with us, and so our preachers. Uh, today is half of our 10th grade class, so we'll invite Reese and Brooklyn and Bo to come forward, and let's welcome them. Reese Johnson. I am the daughter of Josh and Sarah Johnson, and this is my faith statement. I was born on April 26, 2007, and my faith journey officially started as I was baptized at Kavitsai Lutheran Church in Milan on June 4, 2007. I grew up attending Sunday school and church with my family on Sundays. I began attending Grace Lutheran Church in seventh grade when I started my confirmation journey. This is when I really started to better understand God and the imp impact and importance of faith. When I joined confirmation and started taking notes, it made me pay attention to the sermon for probably the first time in my life. When I would sit, listen, and write down notes, it made me process the message and understand what was being taught. Often as I was listening to the sermon and taking notes, I would realize that I could relate to the story and connect the message to my own life. When I realized I could relate to the lessons taught in church, it made me feel closer to God and reminds me of how much I have yet to learn. Over the past year, my faith has grown stronger since joining Agapis in ninth grade. Agapis gave me a place to go every Wednesday to forget all my worries, focus on God, and enjoy the present moment. On tour, we would have daily devotions and shared our testimonies. At first, it was uncomfortable and scary for me to share my thoughts, but when I grew more comfortable, it made me feel so much closer to God. Being in those small groups for just a little bit each day was refreshing. One of my favorite memories of, of Agapis was campfires on tour. We would be singing songs around the fire, and everything felt so peaceful in those moments, and we could feel God all around us. I am also fortunate to have a strong Christian role models in my life to help guide me. I have watched my grandparents faithfully attend church every Sunday and say Norwegian prayers before each family meal. When I think of a key person who has helped me in my faith development, it would be my cousin Evie. Evie and I are only two months apart in age. While Evie may be younger than me, I have looked up to her and admired her connection to God and her faith ever since we were little. I have never met anyone else my age that is as confident in who they are as Evie is. She has a level of confidence in who she is that I greatly admire. I know her strong faith and connection to God is where she draws her strength and poise from. I hope as I continue to develop my faith that one day I can walk with peace. I know she feels, of, uh, she feels because of the faith and trust she has in God. 
One simple part of my faith is saying nightly prayers. For as long as I can remember, I've ended my day saying a simple prayer with my dad. The one that starts with, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That simple prayer and the consistency of my dad is something that will always stay with me. It led me to the verse I chose for this statement. The verse I chose is Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This verse spoke to me because sometimes I catch myself worrying about the future, forgetting to live in the present. Life gives us so many reasons to worry, from simple things like the next test or next game to the health of fr friends and family. God isn't telling us to pretend our problems don't exist or that we don't need to study for the next test. God is encouraging us not to become so consumed with worry about tomorrow's issues that we keep from living today. One way that can help me get rid of some of my worry is praying. It feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders and reminds me that God is with me, always with me and listening. So when I feel alone, I pray. Because I know God will always be with me and he is always with every single one of us and helping us along the way. He has a plan for us, so there is no reason for us to worry. My life is in his hands. Over the past few years, I've realized that faith takes many forms, from prayers with friends around a bonfire, bursting into song on long bus rides, and long talks with new and old friends into early morning hours on tour. Those moments when you can feel God all around you while you're singing in a church full of people who are singing along and praising God. I believe that my faith journey is just beginning with the opportunities I have in Agape's church and the guidance of strong Christian role models in my life. I have all the building blocks to develop and grow a connection to God and the community of people who serve him. My name is Brooklyn Lee, daughter of Sarah Peter Lee. I believe that God and Jesus are all around us at all times. I believe that it is a good thing when I go to church. I have gone to Grace Lutheran Church since I was born. I was baptized in this church. I went to Sunday school here. I took First Communion in this church. I took confirmation classes, and soon I will be confirmed in this church. From from on, I will continue to continue to attend this church and worship God. I go to church with my family, and I truly believe that I am a Christian. I will believe that for the rest of my life. I have many Christian influencers in my life. They are my mom and dad, my grandparents, Mark and Lisa Willand, my aunts, Rachel Anderson and Bethany Wager, and my confirmation mentor, Sandy Club. Now there are many people that believe in Christ, but some don't believe because they think the earth was all man-made. My personal opinion is that there is a good, there is a God because he is someone that has always been there and will always be by my side for the, everything I go through. This definitely applies to everyone that believes in him. This helps me understand forgiveness in life and I have and, and how God gave it to us long ago on the cross. So he so we are always forgiven for whatever we do. Something that motivates God's commitment to us is how much he gives to us and sacrifices to us every day. My responsibil our responsibility in Christ is to pray to him, thank him, and cherish every moment that we have on this beautiful earth. The church is a place where you go at the beginning of the week and ask God for forgiveness. This is an important place to many people, including myself. This is the time that people come together and forget about the things that are yet to come. My confirmation verse is Pasm 20, chapter 19, verse 8. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart and commandment of the Lord is clear. Enlightening the eyes, this verse is important to me because it can tell people that there is an understanding and that God is a good Lord. The best thing in my life of faith for me is the people that surround me in the building and the people that believe in the same thing as I do. Something that has helped me in my faith journey are the nights that my parents came down to my room and prayed with me before I went to sleep. This is something that I will do, be doing with my children one day. Hi, I am 
Bo Johnson, the oldest son of Ben and Mandy Johnson. Uh, and this is my faith statement. Ever since I can remember, I've been going to church. I was baptized in Milan at Kvitside Lutheran Church, where I grew up and started learning about God. I have lots of good memories from Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and Christmas programs. I started coming to Grace when I was in seventh grade, the same year I started confirmation. The first year was a lot of fun and we got to do a lot of activities with the class. Towards the end of seventh grade, COVID came in and it made it hard to go to confirmation. In eighth grade, most of the confirmation classes were online and we missed a lot of group activities. It was a lot harder to stay focused on the online classes than in person. I'm thankful we were able to start meet again, meeting again in ninth grade. Justin Wager is my mentor. We are a lot alike and had a lot of meaningful conversations about God, life, and sports. I am very thankful to have him as my mentor. He showed me his per perspective on how to be a good Christian. Confirmation has taught me how to read the Bible and it has taught me different lessons from the Bible and what it means to be a Christian. Another important part in my faith is trusting God. Sports was always my top priority, but then I tore my ACL in eighth grade and it was taken away from me. I wasn't able to play sports for almost a year and it was uh, probably the hardest thing I've had to go through in my life so far. Not being able to play sports forced me to find other hobbies and I had to trust God that this experience would teach me valuable lessons. I learned that hard things in life can either bring you down or make you stronger. I know he put me through this to make me stronger and a better person. I know that I can get through the hard times with God by my side, which is why I chose Jeremiah 29:11 as my Bible verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Worshiping and praising also plays a big role in my faith. I'm gonna be honest, I don't get to church as much as I should, but when I do, I enjoy listening to Pastor Kendall and Pastor Austin's messages. I am always glad that I went and I go back home feeling renewed. My favorite way to worship is agapes. I have really grown in my faith through agapes. It is really fun. You get to hang out with your friends, sing songs, go on tour, and make amazing memories. But the real reason why I like agapes is because of the way it makes me feel. It makes me feel like God is present when the whole group is singing, and, the and it makes the church feel alive. I am very fortunate to be a part of this church and to have the opportunity to be in agapes. Through all these experiences, I've learned what it means to be a Christian, how to pray, how to believe, how to follow God's path, how to worship, and how to praise God. I will be able to use these lessons throughout the rest of my life.
my name is Cade Solom, and this is my faith statement. My parents, Dean and Sadie, had me baptized at Grace Lutheran on September 10, 2006, by Pastor Lori Wold. My early memories of my faith were going to Sunday school where we would learn stories and songs about Jesus. We would also prepare Christmas programs every year and attend youth gatherings. I also attend, attended Bible camp with friends when I was in elementary. That's where I first learned about Gaga Ball. I also grew up watching Agape services and going to some practices because my mom is one of the leaders. When I think about God and who he is, I believe God is my loving father who is there all the time. God gives us grace not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. I believe Jesus is God's son whose death has given me the opportunity to have external life. I think of church as a place to come pray, worship, and talk to God. You can learn here, you can learn here and grow closer to him. I'm not saying we only grow in our faith and praise God when we are in church, but I think of it as everyone coming together to share their faith and praise to him. It also helps me reflect on how my week was or see what I did well during the week to thank him for something I need to seek his help for. My confirmation verse is Hebrews 12:1. It states, keep running the race that is set before you with endurance. I chose this verse because it reminds me that no matter what is going on, I should keep going with his help. Things aren't going, always going to go my way, but with God, I can confidently continue running the race set before me. This verse can also relate to many areas of my life besides running. I know that during the course of life, God is there guiding me, when I'm either not doing my best things or not, aren't going well in any part of my life. I can seek Him for advice or just listen to Him. Sure, there are times when it is hard to be faithful or times when I question God, but I know God is there helping me run my race through ups and downs no matter what. I don't feel like my faith has faced anything super big yet because I just have really started my personal journey. Not, I know that there will always be those hills I have to face, yet I know God is there and I'm not alone. I feel like my faith has grown through my years of Sunday school and confirmation, but my relationship with Christ has grown within the last year, mainly from being in Agapes. I say this because I never started talk, talking to God consistently until I joined Agapes last year. When I was younger, I was taught to pray before I went to bed and before I ate, but I really didn't fully grasp the true reason behind it. Now I feel like I am able to just sit down and listen to God talk. Being able to go to Agapis week after week has really become a time when I can reset myself and focus on finishing the week with God in mind. To me, Agapis is more of a personal decision where I can learn about Him and grow my faith. Besides church and Agapis, there have been multiple people who have helped me in my faith journey. One person who has helped me in my faith journey is my mom because she always reminded us to pray before bed and that prayer, prayer is important. At Agapis each week, she shares a devotion to help us grow a part of our faith. We reflect on what we have done in the week and what we want to accomplish within the week and beyond and how God and faith can, can, can and should be a part of it. Another person who has recently come into my life is Pastor Austin. Even though we have not really had a lot of time together, he has taught me and others a lot about faith. I first met Pastor Austin when he started coming to our cross-country practices and meets last fall. As the year went on, I would go to church and listen to his sermons, and the way he could connect with people right off the bat is why I think he helped so many people grow their faith, me included. He even came on a Gopi tour and ended up being the leader of my Bible study group. When he talked about his faith, Pastor Austin opened up and shared with us important moments that happened in his life, which helped me grow in my own faith. Now that I have been learning more about prayer and my faith and have had great mentors helping me understand my, my beliefs better, I can pass it on by sharing my faith to a younger generation and encourage them to run their own races with endurance. With God as the guide on the path he has for them. I, a path I pray I continue to follow as I learn and grow more about God, my faith, and who he has called it to be. Good morning. My name is Reese Oxendorf. I grew up going to a Catholic church. It was a lot different than here, but it was still a lot of fun. In the middle of second grade, we came to Sunday school at Grace because our church didn't offer any Sunday school. My cousins and I had a lot of fun learning about our faith here. When my aunt started working here, we came to church more often and eventually became members. It was a significant change for us, but it was the right change. We fit in perfectly here, knowing this is where we are supposed to be. Even as a second grader, I remember coming here and feeling like I belonged. 
Growing up with my aunt working here, I got signed up to do many things. If no one was doing it, she knew I would. I remember going to Sunday school and release time on Wednesdays during school. And occasionally, I would sing a solo or duet in church. One time I got the chance to sing on Christmas Day. I also remember Christmas programs and singing solos and duets there too. As I got older and with COVID, I didn't sing in church anymore. But last spring, I started singing in the corner over there for a contemporary worship. It was a lot of fun. Growing up at the church helped me to be closer to God. I like getting to know Pastor Kendall, Emily, Tammy, and all of the staff and interns. They made it fun to be here and to be involved in church activities. Tammy has been my mentor since eighth grade. I appreciate the time she spent with me. I'll never forget when she surprised me at my cross country meet, our conversations about faith and what being a Christian means to me. Agapes is another big part of my faith and helped make it what it is today. Getting to sing God's word with others is so fulfilling. On the Agape tour this year, it was overwhelming at first, but once you start to take every bit of it in, it all hits and it is so refreshing. It's hard to put into words, but it feels surreal. Just thinking about this big group of high schoolers coming together all in God's name. Another big part of the tour was small group time. They put us into small groups and did Bible study together throughout the tour. Hearing everyone else's experiences and faith story growing up was another game changer. The services were my favorite part though. I love singing, so getting to sing and connect with God was amazing. Everything hit me in the middle of our service in Sister Bay. I knew God was there and I was connected with him. We all felt connected with God and could tell the con congregation was just as connected as we were. The service when we got home was another special service. We all knew it was our last time and we were not ready for it to end. I've never felt more connected, connected than that week. It was life changing for me. Something that lives with me is do your best and God will do the rest. I heard it before my first varsity cross country race. We say it every time before we run and it reminds me and all of my teammates that as long as we are doing our best, God will always be there and guide us the rest of the way. I apply this in my day to day life as well. For example, I try to my best to make sure everyone feels welcome and loved every time I talk to them, and I always try to be a role model for younger teammates and even older ones. Choosing a verse is hard for me because I had many favorites, but the verse I chose is Luke chapter 6, verse 37, which says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. I chose this verse because I often worry about what others think of me. Sometimes I am too quick to judge and I judge the other person before we get the chance to meet each other. Sometimes I choose not to forgive and wonder why I cannot be forgiven. This is important to my faith because God says to, to, to do to others as you would have them do to you. I know I still have a lot of growing and discovering regarding my faith. I also know that I can say I am a Christian and hold on to that faith as I learn what it means. I know that Jesus died for me and I will do my best to live for him. I know that God will keep me strong and grounded, and he will always be with me. I'm so thankful to my family, Pastor Kendall, Tammy, and this congregation for helping me build my relationship with God. I can't see, wait to see where my faith will lead me in the future. Let's give one more round of applause for all of our confirmants. Thank you all. Let's turn and pray. God of all generations, we thank you especially for the gift of this generation of confirmation students. Thank you for all the ways that you've worked in their lives and the ways you will continue to work in their lives. We thank you for giving them the courage to share their faith this morning and encourage our congregation. Continue to guide them in all their paths and stir their spirits to seek you each day as they love their neighbors in word and deed. Remind them always of your promises and lead them to also work for the coming of your reign of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of all outsiders, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need wherever they are. We ask that you would restore to community any who are stigmatized by illness, any who feel rejected, or any who live in isolation. Break our hearts for what break yours so that we might join you in the work of making outsiders insiders here at Grace Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious God, we ask that you would comfort all who grieve on this day. We ask that you would give them buoyancy when they feel like they're drowning in the pain of loss. We ask that you would make your grace sufficient for this day that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. In healing God, we ask that you would touch the lives of the following people of our congregation especially. Janet Tollickson, Lane Rimstad, Liz Erickson, John P. Peterson, Christy Peterson Thomas, Jim Heath, Rick Oden, Brad Madsen, Tony Munsterman, Wiley Wiebe, Randy Tenson, Ann Lee Knudsen, Greg Tokolke, Jim Anderson, Tom Beals, Deb Lewis, Ken Club, Jack Flayton, Monica Kennedy, Lauren Thone, Mike Thompson, Julie Miron, Joey Anderson Ernest, Vicki Groh, Denny Holstrom, Santa Sukut, Stephanie and Gary Childs, and the families of Jack Lewis, Catherine Wallum, Jeff Moe, and Donald Mogard. Lord, in your mercy. All these spoken prayers and all the unspoken prayers in our hearts we commend to you, O God, trusting in your mercy and grace. Amen. We will now take the offering. then we turn back to our bulletins for our offertory prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O giver of life, for all the gifts you bestow upon us every moment of every day. Help us to recognize the source of our lives, our blessings, and our very being. Take these small tokens of our thanks and bless them so that they may be blessings to others. In the name of the greatest gift of all, Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift 
everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. So we remember together in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
And will the congregation please rise? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood keep and unite us now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the blessings of this table. May our lives be made new by these gifts of grace. And may your love be made known through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.